Dave, how are we? Good, Woodsy. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad, mate. Not too bad. A little bit nervous for this. Uh, what we got? What we got going on now? But uh, excited as well. Yeah, I'm uh, excited myself. Uh, thanks for thanks yeah. for asking me on. No, it's all right. Like obviously, I've been following the finish line for at least a good couple of years now, and it's a little bit surreal. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like when you meet someone that you've been watching. Yeah. Like, it's like kind of like a celebrity kind of thing, but obviously, it's uh, but like I say, I went out to yourself and just asked. I've been trying to do it by myself, but I just haven't been able to do it. So, I asked you if you wanted to come along and I spoke to you obviously about the concept of what I feel like we could do together, yeah. Uh, which is, uh, if anybody watching is uh, basically every every year. At Cheltenham, there's uh, there's one cup that gets uh, decided, and that's the Irish and the British, which is the Presbury Cup. And, and the, uh, I, the Irish, the Irish usually win it. To be fair, so. I know. That's what I was, when I when I thought about it, I wasn't thought about it right because I've literally given myself uh, a handicap when it comes to picking it. Because you like, you probably have picking, to be honest. Yeah. I have a little bit, haven't I? Like with, yeah. with Gordon Elliott, and then with your uh, Willie Mullins. Yeah. All I've got, all I've got really is Paul Nichols, who probably gets about one if he's lucky. And uh, Nicky, Hen Nicky Henderson does well. I give it, he does does do well, especially with the hurdles. He does quite well with them. A few, uh, a few, a few years back, you were doing better with the likes of Alan King and stuff like that. But some of the trainers over there now has it's been a while since they had um, some decent horses. So uh, Willie and Gordon have taken, Willie and Gordon have taken over. Oh, massively. Gordon's come, Gordon's come with a bang. Yeah. Massive bang. I remember times where you had like people like, ah, oh, it's not Wayne Hutchinson. Who's the bloke who used to ride for Wayne Hutchinson or Alan King? Yes. Oh, his um, his son had a winner today. Oh, really? oh, really? Yeah, Wayne Hutchinson's son. It was the second winner uh, since he... Uh, Started riding out there. At, uh, I think it was at Suttle or somewhere. I had the racing on. I, I was, I was only half paying attention to it. You know that kind of way. <laughs> like you've got people like David Pike. They used to win races. Obviously, Philip, Philip Hobbs. He won one last year with Deputy Soy. Don't get, don't get me started on Deputy Soy because yeah, I, I was there last year and I had Deputy Soy for a lot of money. And it was I thought, a strange oh, one. There. He never performed at all. It was uh, it was very strange. It was weird. I don't know if it's because he dropped back last time he did. Was it two four? Wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Two, four, two, five, and now he's, he dropped back to two. But I, you like you can imagine me getting there. I'm turning up to Cheltenham. Uh, Envoy out. Envoy out just won me a little bit of money. I was like, yes, yeah, sweet. Al Jules dropped out. Jack and Poussois dropped out. I'm thinking, well. Can't lose. <laughs> yeah. Even when even I when I picked up with Matt Chapman, I was like, Matt, definitely just saw it tonight. I had me green and green and yellow scarf on. Standing there like uh, damn the company just won as well. Champ just won. I'm like, yeah, I'm loving this. Get it. Definitely comes on. And you might as well not have turned up. Yeah, it was a strange one. Uh, I I don't know what happened, but Look, I don't think he's a two miler anyway, but sure, look, I'm not, I'm not training him, so I'm just, no, uh, I I'm just talking shit online like I do on the finishing line, so <laughs> I give my opinion, and that's, that's, it sticks with me, so. Yeah, that's yeah. probably going, probably it's my fault, really, for going uh, against Alistair. Maybe I should have kept with Alistair, and potentially uh, got my money back or something, but it wasn't nice. It wasn't nice. And then after that, I went for the, my favourite horse, Tiger Roll. I thought, you know what? Tiger Roll will get it back for me. Had the green yeah. and yellow had the green and yellow scarf on. Went against the green and yellow of McManus. And uh, of course, what happened? Uh, Tiger Roll got beat. I, was like, oh, yeah. I know. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't. Uh, I was hoping he wouldn't get beat as well. But sure, look, we live and we learn, and we uh, we're going on to this year, aren't we? At least. Uh, exactly. At least it was on, and uh, at least we have we have it to look forward to again this year. That's the main which thing. Is, right? Which is the concept of the show. Exactly. I think racing has been uh, pioneering to get back and with the whole COVID and they got back soon yeah. as they can. For people like obviously Holly Doyle and all the flat racing have 
made it so people are aware of everything through the whole COVID yeah. and stuff like that. But uh, enough of the flat because we're not talking about the flat and enough of last year's Cheltenham. This uh, let's talk about this year's Cheltenham. So for anyone watching, uh, the plan is basically for me and Dave to join up every three weeks and every three weeks. Every three say, weeks, yeah, yeah, three weeks, and basically go down the Presby route of Britain versus Ireland. So I will talk about the British horses that sometimes maybe get left out. And Dave will obviously talk about the Irish ones, which people uh, just know about because the Irish can be in, uh, superior to the British sometimes when it comes to national national home. But this year is going to be different. I've got a feeling this year will be different. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, <laughs> the Irish, the Irish horses. Look, we have um, we have a solid team every year, but I'll uh, I'll try and find um, some ones that might be a little bit obscure. And uh, as we get towards the festival, obviously we'll pick some um, handicap ones, and I'll try and find some decent prices if I can. Um, they could be absolutely useless, but we'll give it a go yeah. anyway. As long as you pick a good uh, Gordon Elliott for the Boodles, you'll be alright, mate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, so we'll meet we we'll meet every three weeks and we we'll discuss five of the horses that stood out uh f- through that three weeks and uh we'll go back with the forwards and then we'll discuss about what horses stood out and how we see them going to Cheltenham and where we see them go to Cheltenham and if it's something to keep an eye out for people. And then we will focus on certain Cheltenham races for anti post. Yep. where we'll be, I don't know, this this week we're going to do the Gold Cup, the Ryanair, and we're also going to do the Arkle, okay, which might this time be a British winner, which <laughs> which would be good. So that might be 1-0 to me. Uh, and then we'll discuss that and talk about more and then obviously go from go from there. So let's kick on with uh, the first selection. So Dave, what's the first selection that took your eye in the last few weeks? Overland. Okay, so we were. Um, I just get my notes up here now. Two seconds. We were uh, kind of back and forth over the last few days, and there's been another couple of runs since. And there is uh, obviously good racing the weekend, so we'll, we'll, we'll touch back on that in the next three weeks. But yes. my uh, yes. my first one that took my eye was uh, Manella Indo. Yes, um, yes, he ran at Wexford. He ran at Wexford over the weekend. He's obviously second in the RSA last year. Um, he's not my favourite horse in the world. If anybody watches the finishing line, uh, I I don't think I've ever tipped him or, or ever um, been interested in backing him anti post. But the thing about him this year that I liked was he he, he seems to struggle to get fit, and they seem to need a, a couple of runs to get yes. him fit. Yeah. But he done that really, really well. I think it was on Bank Holiday Monday here um, at Wexford. Milan native, uh, he won a handicap at Cheltenham last year. He was fit, race fit, and he, he went out to try and beat Manel Indo, and he was beaten fair and square and by a good few lengths. So I think it was a good performance, and um, I think you might see him run a little bit more this year than the last uh, two years, last year over fences and his first year over hurdles. But does does it worry you the fact that obviously the Gold Cup is a little bit further than the RSA and he looked he would killed himself off going to the line at the RSA? Yeah and yeah and no because I think um, Henry will have him primed like he, he has done the last two years for his best run of the year to be at Cheltenham. Um but I obviously do think there's other horses in the Gold Cup that will beat him but I think he'll be a good horse to follow for uh, for people through the winter. He'll he'll win his fair fair share of races. I think, to be honest, if you're thinking Andy Post, I think for a good solid each way bet, I think Manila Indo would be a good a good bet. Like you say, there is other obviously other horses in the uh, yeah. in the uh, Gold Cup, obviously going with uh, the Pride of Ireland, which is in there, which obviously hasn't run yet, so can't be mentioned, but. Going for his hat trick, obviously you have to compete with that. But uh, yeah, I, I can I can see I can I can see him run well. Obviously, Rachel, uh, very good jockey, 
She, has, she has she ever run in the Gold Cup? Has she has she ridden the Gold Cup before? Um, I think she was on Monoly last term. Was she? I think so. Yeah. She got very experienced. Oh, Monoly, that's another one, isn't it? <laughs> same, yeah. other, same colours, I believe. Monoly. Same yeah. colours, yeah. Same owner. Yeah. So obviously she's got a bit more experience as well this year for that as well. So she could come on herself to know a bit more how to ride it. What, what do you think they ride it, ride them out from the front like they did in the RSA? Or? Oh, it's hard to know. I'd say that's the way he wants to go. So they'll probably let him bowl along. Yeah, but it's hard to know. I think the Gold Cup is shaping up to be very good this year. Uh, it does most years, but then you'll get injuries along the way. So it's hard yes. to know. Look, he. I, I think he seems, to, he seems to have grown up a little bit and he needed to grow up a little bit. Um, he won that well uh, Monday. So we'll see now over uh, the winter how he kicks on. He did run well, to be honest. And obviously, I've watched the finish line. You guys, uh, Andrew mentioned that this year he actually looks to be fit. In other years, he's needed to run and needed to get fit. But right now, he looks to be fit and prime. So yeah. things can only be go up for that, I feel, for Minamendo. So yeah, I think that's a great shout, to be honest. And uh, my first one, right. I'm going to put this scarf on for now. Just uh, put this bit of scarf on and. Uh, you might you might recognise his colours. They're Mac Pendleton Pagan, Hills. isn't it? They're Pendleton Hills. Like, oh, God the God. owners group. You gotta love the owners group. That's all in my family, the owners group. We've got a, a few a few people in my family have a few owners. I've got a whole myself in the owners group. Really? Yeah, so I thought I'd wear the colours for this one because it's an owners group horse. I've got a horse called Blame It on Sally, uh, which is okay. my king. Uh, is she, is it you, uh... Oh, it's not this horse. I wish it was. It was meant. To, it was talking about Cheltenham last year, but he didn't go. My dad got an anti post bet for like sixty to one, but he never went. So I was a bit gutted. But uh, what you do, what you do with the owners group, if you're not sure, you pay like a lump sum of like fifty to sixty pounds, and you get the chair and the horse for a year. Uh, yeah. And you like go into a hat for owners badges and all that sort of stuff you get up to date videos it's quite good if you if you introduce them into like horse ownership and you get a picture and you get talking about your horse so i think my, my horse had like two races and one on over hurdles and one on the flat and then it got injured so it's currently injured at the moment so oh, i might really hopefully be back soon yeah hopefully but i might not be part i might not be on it i might not be on it because it ran a right over hurdles for the first time. It didn't do that. I tell you, I tell you where it ran. It ran in the race where Solo won. Okay. It ran in that race. Is that the Adonis? Is that the Adonis? Yeah, the Adonis. The yeah, Adonis, the great, great two juvenile hurdle at Kempton, yeah. Yes, he ran He ran in that because he was down for the uh, for the triumph. Uh, and it just, he, he, jumped, he jumped well for the first time, but I just think his stamina let him down. And he had people like Solo and he had the other French horse that come over didn't you uh by a trainer i don't know i can't remember who the trainer was but he, another horse from france and which was favorite that came second of thing but yeah that ran in the adonis but my my pick for this week is a horse called overpriced mixer okay uh obviously the owners group uh so ran in juvenile uh two mile race I can't remember where it was. It was like last week, and the it used to run with Jamie Osborne on the on the flat. Uh, won a couple okay. of low, low low graded races over there uh, until the owners group obviously bought it and then sold it to Nicky Henderson. Uh, Nicky Henderson sent it on the flat. I think it had Ryan Moore on board, uh, and it went off. I think favourite or second favourite, and it came about last. So obviously okay. not a great start. Not a great start, but that was obviously I think it was one mile six, I think. One, yeah, I think I was in the flat. But it did its first run over hurdles last week and it won and I think it performed quite good. But if I had to pick a horse that did stand out for me this week and for a horse I think I know where it's gonna go and for an anti post bet for a horse, the main thing about an anti post bet I feel is that you know where the horse is gonna go. There's no point in putting any post bet on a horse when it could go to three or four different races because you yeah. just more chance of losing your money. So I think they bought this horse, gave it to Nicky Henderson because they want another penalty horse. 
they're hoping for another Pennant Hills. And I saw it before, it jumped really well. The last jumped out to the left a bit, but it kept on going good at the end. So I can only see this horse going to the Triumph. And if it keeps progressing like it was, I reckon it can have a good shout and we could have another Pennant Hills on our hands for the Irons Pro. You might see, if, you might see a few of these, counting them. We saw a few. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. That's a, that's a good one. Yeah, and if you currently at the moment, you can get, like that, you can get 33 to 1 with William Hill at the moment. So for a horse that you know, a horse that you know is going to go there by a trainer who won it two years ago within the same colours, I think it's a great it's a great anti post each way bet to uh to just and a horse to a horse just to keep an eye on because thirty three to one is still a big price and it's only got, it's going to get smaller if he keeps winning but he probably won't get that small so just keep your eye I couldn't eye on it. I, I couldn't argue with that one that's that's a good shout great that's the first one done then and now the set now your second one right I go I go with my second one and. It's kind of touching on what you were saying there about knowing where uh, where horses are, are, are actually going to go and stuff. This one, as an anti-post bet, it would be one of those markets where you find uh, any race. So it could go to the Arca, it could go to the Marsh, it could go to the RSA. And it's uh, Andy Dufresne, who ran the same day as Manila Indo um, over fences, his first time over fences. Heard of that name. I and I kind of liked I, I liked him last year. Um, the bubble kind of burst when he, he, he lost a couple of hurdle races, but those hurdle races have actually turned out to be quite decent. And I think he'll be a decent uh, chaser and a better chaser than he was a hurdler. Like he was beaten by la latest exhibition in one of the, the hurdle races, which is not to be sniffed at, oh, who no. ran really well in the Albert Bartlett. Right, and I looks was, to be. Uh, I was there for the Albert Bartlett. And that yeah, like, that, was, that, that looks a really good race. Yeah. But my suggestion would be to back him any race because he's in the he's in the stable obviously, and and Gordon has so many horses. He's in by Allen there, so you don't you don't really know where he's going to go. Um, so an anti post would be to back him any race, but I do think he he'll probably end up in the Arca. That's uh, that's what my feeling yeah, is yeah. towards it, but. You reckon have another five, five in the race on, on our hands, you reckon? He, yeah, different type of horses, but I think he's yeah. the speed for the Arca. Um, usually the Arca winners, they, they'll stay a little bit further as well. So, But yeah, yeah Andy, Andy D, yeah. Andy Dufresne. Andy Dufresne, which is obviously from the best films ever made. So just on that, yeah. he has to win a race. I mean, just... Yeah. And if, if he if I think that's why a lot of people uh, a lot of people kind of liked his name, so uh, they wanted him to be good. Yeah, I was a bit surprised he didn't go to them. Do you, do you know? Do you know do you reckon why he never made it over there? Because you just think it wasn't wasn't his time. I don't think they were ever going to Cheltenham with him last year. No, mm -hmm. I I I'd say they were saving him for entry, and then obviously it didn't happen. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That was a bummer. No, no grand national. That was, Oh well, hopefully we have it this year. What's uh, yeah. what's your second one? All right, my second one, uh, which you actually you actually touched upon in the uh, finishing line, which is McFabulous, uh, Paul Nichols, uh, horse. Paul Nichols has stated that his aim is to go for the Stayers Hurdle, uh, formerly known as the World Hurdle, which he hasn't had much luck in since the retirement of Big Bucks or since uh, Sam uh, Twiston Davis got on it and uh, gave it the worst ride ever. And I think that's yeah. <laughs> his yeah. career went down the hill, I think, after that. But uh, yeah, yeah I think he got, he got slated, didn't he, for that? You know what I mean, a horse that runs everywhere. Ah, look, he got absolutely Big Bucks is my favourite horse, but like... Oh, really? These things happen. Yeah, well, him and them, him and them, and him and them are, are are up there. But look, I think Big Box was the most talented, uh, the talented in a lot of them. But he he had his own ideas about the game as well, which I like horses like that. They kind of they know they're good, and sometimes they don't want to put it all in. <laughs> yeah, a few years ago, you had a, you had like two dead certs. You had Cravega, and you had Big Box. And you just knew that if they turned up, 
Nothing was going to beat him. Like, Courtney Vega, how many how many players no. did she win? Three or four, wasn't it? Something like that. Uh, four or five, I think. Four or five. She won a lot anyway. I think she won a lot. Yeah, she she was she was there every year for a good few years. <laughs> so I feel I watched after I watched the race. Uh, he won his last two races as well before the season finished, and obviously gone back into winning ray, ways. And all the Paul Nichols horses are banging form at the moment, uh, so I wouldn't put anybody off betting a Paul Nichols horse for any race this Saturday or anything because he is normally he normally delivers on a Saturday. Uh, yeah. They say like ITV, the king of Saturdays, or saying. Uh, so I would never put anybody off backing Paul Nichols horse on a Saturday because his horse is a banging form. Obviously. Uh, I don't think you were there. Were you there when uh, you spoke to Harry Dunham? Uh, no, I was actually working. Uh, I was in the gym. I couldn't get time off. And obviously, he spoke very highly of the horse and the other horses. So, I still think he's going to have to improve to be competitive, uh, obviously. But I think it's a wide open race this year. Uh, the favourite has obviously had heart, heart problems. So. Yeah. Is that, going to, is that going to be? Is he going to be the same horse again? Uh, probably not. And the other winners of the race, everyone couldn't believe they won it. So we've got Linegar. Was it Linegar Oscar? Was that the one that won it? And, yeah, uh, yeah. And Oscar won it. Yeah. Pomp. I think. Uh, I think uh, Linegar Oscar is running this weekend as well in a in a hurdle race. Uh, do I think he's going to win the Stairs Hurdle? I think if he keeps progressing, that. He will uh, be ve- have a very good chance. So, at the moment, I I would put him up as a good good each way bet for the stayers. Uh, I do think there's still other horses in that race that could potentially progress more than him. But for my fi- one of my five selections of the past few weeks that stood out, definitely McFabris is definitely one to keep an eye on for the stayers. And I think if he can go out again and perform against horses more to his level and more to the, the level of the stayers race and he can pull it out the bag then i think he has a serious chance of being very competitive this year in the stairs yeah i agree yeah i agree i think he's a horse and uh, i liked him towards the end of last year and his uh his first run this year was uh was very impressive it was it was good it was good yeah. uh, a couple of poor nickel sources that are looking good as well because he needs a few winners at Cheltenham. Yeah. He wins, he like, he wins the uh, best training every year, but Cheltenham, he kind of misses out, and Nicky Henderson always seems to overtake him. But So hopefully he does need a few a few good winners this year at Cheltenham. Uh, and your, your next one? Um, uh, so my next one is a horse that won at the festival last year, and oh. to me just, just screams like... Uh, like a handicap plot job waiting to happen, and he's oh, on, he's literally me. not he's not being asked to try, and he's uh, he could be finishing a lot closer if uh, he really wanted to, and it's uh, Aramax. <laughs> Aramax. Um, yes. Aramax. He's been he's been in two beginners chases, and he was a juvenile hurdler last year, so he's quite young to be going over fences. Well, I think that will stand to him in the long run because he'd be getting extra weight. But look, he had a well, beginner's chase at Galway and he was in the beginner's chase that Captain Guinness was in um, and unexpected. And he just screams like a horse that's, uh, <laughs> that's waiting for Cheltenham to really show his hand. Um, he's clearly talented. He won the Boodles last year or what used to be the Fred Winter. And uh, yeah. for a long time through the winter, there was words about Aramax is going to win the Fred Winter, and he drifted out a little bit today, the, the, the day of the race, which is which is standard. But I think a lot of shrewdies were on him, and I think a lot of shrewdies will be on him for uh, one of the handicaps at Cheltenham um, when it comes around. Um, well, he was second or- string. He was he was second string last year, wasn't he? Yeah, he was second string, but I think that was a lie as well, Leon. Uh, to be honest, <laughs> I think he was no, first no. string. Um, so yeah, no, I think Aramax will uh, will be there, thereabouts, in a handicap at Cheltenham. Now, what um, what distance and what route he goes, hard to know. So perhaps again, the the Train market where it's it's any race, but 
it's hard to know. Like he won't be going for a Grade One race, so it screams to me like a handicap. But um, look, Cheltenham form always stands up every year. Horses that have ran well the year before or previous times at Cheltenham tend to do well at the festival. So I say yeah, Gordon Elliott knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah, well, Sorry, Devela, I fortunately have yeah. him. Uh, yeah, yeah. Won. Literally, another <laughs> He's my plot job one anyway. I'm saying it early here and uh, we'll be I'd say we'll be talking about him a few more times before the end of the, the year, I'd say. I reckon so as well, to be honest. I agree with you. Obviously, uh, McManus uh, he has a few in the old handicaps, doesn't he? Uh, at Cheltenham. He seems to pop up now and then with a couple, especially in the past few years. He's done all right, McManus, the past few years at Cheltenham. He's done all right. Yeah, yeah look, he's so many good horses and trainers and stuff. He would always do well there, like. Do you know what I was thinking the other day? I was thinking, what the hell ever happened to John Joe O'Neill? He, he used to have he's all had, the good he's, had, he's had a good start to the season. He, he's after getting a couple yeah. of winners. Uh, he's, uh, he's he's flying at the moment now. Like JP used to give him, he used, to, used to be JP, him, Tony McCoy as a th- as a, I felt as a as a as a bunch. Yeah. And then it, you had they had synchronized, obviously won the gold cup, and then went to the uh, Grand National and jinked and dropped Tony McCoy off before he even got to the race. And then, unfortunately, fell at one of the, one of the fences and obviously got, uh, had, to, had to be put down. Uh, yeah, it was a shame. Then, yeah, massive shame. Ever since then, apart from probably Annie Mack, last year, he just, I just don't see him having many of the big uh, green and yellows anymore, which is... He seems to go down different routes, any old McManus now, which is I don't know. I don't know it's hard, it's hard to know, but John Joe has started the season well. He's had a couple of winners, um, and uh, his outfit is a good jockey as well. Now I have to say, he's a good, oh, he's he's a good player. It's so what did he win the Martin Pipe a couple of years ago? His son, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah I, had, I had the buddy second, so that was great. Dad had the first, but I had the second. I think that was a what was that? Was a Gordon Elliott horse as well? I think. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember that course is called cool now. But uh, I'll think about it and I'll get back to you on that one. My next one. Okay. I'm going to mention him. I don't think... Right, obviously we're talking about Cheltenham and he's had a few at Cheltenham and to be honest, he's flopped massively. So I'm going to speak about okay. him because... I'm going to speak about him because he's had two runs over fences which he hasn't run before. And I thought he, he did all right. He's jumping, he's jumping held up. And even though, let's be fair, he didn't really beat much. I would have beat last time he beat uh, Getaway Trump. So, and, that, and even that finished last. He hasn't really beaten much, but he's jumped well and he's won. So that's the main thing. The next one is going to be Fusil Raffles. Because yeah, he's, looked all right. he's looked all right in his two chases, to be fair. I'm going to say, it looks all right. Nicky Henderson can always get him ready for that race. You know what I mean? And, and uh, look, I think he, he he looks like he's going to be a better chaser than he was a hurdler anyway. So He won a lot, to be honest. He won a lot of hurdle races. Uh, mm. But it seemed to have been on better ground than a proper soft ground. Yeah. Um, as I was discussing with you earlier, uh, Cheltenham day one, you're lucky to get anything but soft ground. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Soft ground or heavy first day. And I think that's what's going to let him down. The fact that it's going to be soft. If it was good, I'd probably have, I would have my money on him because the colours, the colours, the colours won it a couple of years ago, didn't they, with Footpad? Which had, probably had yeah. to be one of the worst articles ever. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> Awful. Well, two, two horses went and just bolted out in front. And then all, so all three were. Teddy, Teddy Mouchoir was in a who's who's a decent animal, but he, he was useless over fences. He needed so to stay over hurdles. So David David Russell had probably you think he won like five races that year, but I have no idea what he was doing with uh Teddy Mouchoir. Yeah. He just and Ruby Walsh all had to do was just use a little bit of knowledge and just go, you know what, these guys have gone way too fast. I'm just yeah. gonna sit here. Just gonna jump jump a fence, jump a fence and then see you later around the corner and won it by like eleven lengths. Yeah, it was, a bad, it was a bad race. Yeah, it was. I think there's only five horses that even running. Yeah. So the colours won it a couple of years ago. So obviously they want to try and get their name back on the board. Obviously you've got Daryl Jacob, who's the uh, the main rider for them. 
which I still think Daryl Jacob is a, a very good rider. Used to ride for Paul Nichols, obviously, until he uh, he lost it to Sam, didn't he? I think. I believe. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. He lost it to Sam, and uh, picked up uh, them colours, and now he does well. He does. He does pick up a few winners, to be honest. And uh, yeah, so I believe that the grounds, which it isn't going to be, it isn't going to be good on the first day. I, I'll leave my hat if any good comes yeah. in through the first day at Cheltenham. But I do believe that he will pick up a few more races before there and maybe potentially some ones around Christmas time where he could go on and win a couple of good chases. But come to Cheltenham, uh, I know he's one of my five, but I, I don't, I, I can't put him to win, to win the, uh, to win the Arkle this year. I'm yeah, just... it's a, it's a tough Arkle, but he has looked, he has looked good in his, in his couple of chases, but I'd say there's a few better horses than him, all right, in the Arca. 100%, 100%. And obviously, Nicky's got his uh, his main man still to to show. Yeah. So he's still to see. We've got, see. we've got to see how he is. But obviously, he fell over hurdles, remember? What was it, his first or second race? He still fell over hurdles. So we don't know yet how he's going to take to to jump in. So that's my third selection. What's your, your fourth day? My fourth, um, my fourth, fifth, and, and Aramax were, were in the same beginners chase, and obviously, three from the same race is a lot. But they're all talented in in different ways, and there hasn't been that much racer. But my fourth, I, I speak about the winner as my fifth. My fourth is Captain Guinness. He's a Ooh. horse I actually. Do, I, I Andrew, do have. Andrew, back. Dave, Andrew's yeah. listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Andrew, uh, the finishing line, loves this horse. But look, <laughs> the bubble seemed to burst the last day. But look, I, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't write him off and i give him another chance. Um, he, seemed to, he seemed to spit the dummy out the last day when uh, the horse that won was going a little bit faster than him. And unless there was something wrong, they said after the race he was uh, clinically abnormal. So his blood work came back bad. I'd give him another chance. He was travelling really, really well in the Supreme and... and last year and it looked like he was going to at least place when uh, he got brought down um, again that form ties in with Andy Dufresne um, I think all that form is fairly good we need to see him again over fences and if he doesn't perform over fences and he doesn't jump well I would just put him straight back over hurdles give him another yeah. season over hurdles he's only had two or three races over hurdles and yes, uh, I think um, he's a good animal. Um, what race he goes for? If he stays, if he stays over fences and, and, and gets better and, and looks the real deal, I'm sure he's an he's an Arkle candidate. And I actually do have him backed for the Arkle, uh, one of my anti post bets already. Um, well, I so hope, I think I hope, I hope you backed him now and not before because yeah, your price yeah. has gone up. Now. Yeah, I think. <laughs> um, I think definitely give him another chance. He's uh, he's not one to write off. So that's my I, fourth. I saw. I, I thought I saw earlier that he's out to like thirty-three to one now. I think for the Arkle. So if you're gonna yeah. if you're gonna give him a chance, now's the time to your money on because yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Like I had him. I, I normally because it's the first race. I have. I normally have. I have two two horses. Normally back two horses, and I back uh, one I think's gonna win it, and one that's gonna have a good chance of maybe come a third, just in case everyone flops. And I had. This this is because, to be honest, this was mainly one that because of, I was listening to you, <laughs> and I I uh, listened to you guys, and you sold it for me, which is Asterion for Lounge. Yeah, and I thought, Do you know what, I'm fucking doing it. I'm like, Willie Mullins won it last year. He always has the horse primed for the Supreme. This one absolutely bolted up. In his last race, didn't it? Before he went there, yeah. And you, like, especially especially yourself, sold it for. Him. And uh, I thought, you know what? I'm going for it. Got it. Obviously, it was like third favorite. Shiskin was favorite, I think, for literally the whole time until the day where it came up soft ground. And he Shiskin drifted to like six to one, I think, on the day. Mad to think he won it, and he was like seven to two, and he drifted to six to one. Like if you bet, yeah. if you if you bet uh, online with uh, best odds guarantee, you'd have been laughing that day if you backed this game. 
But obviously, Steve Falange just kept jumping out to his right like a maniac, <laughs> which then caused him to jump right, which he jumped right, caused, uh, ex or was it Exeter Dana, is it? Is that the name? Yeah. Yeah. To fall. And obviously he fell, which he was going pretty down well to be honest. I think he'd have he'd have a good shout, I think. Mm. Maybe in the arc if he jumps. To cause Captain Guinness obviously to fall over. So one horse one of my horses took the other one out. And obviously a steer for lunge just bottled it near the end and just didn't find nothing to do. So Captain Guinness is one has always been on my radar. Obviously very disappointed to see how he did because I, to be honest, I thought he was the, he was the, the second best horse in that right in in the Arkle uh, prices uh, down from Shisky and I thought no he'll uh, he'll be back, Woodsy. Don't worry, he'll be back. Back. Well, that unexpected though. And we're going to talk about. It. I'll leave you to your fourth one now, and then I'll talk about him then. Ah, okay. No, I'm giving it away. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, my next one. Well, I we might ruffle a few feathers with this one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk about the posh and becks of racing, okay, the Torval and Dean of racing, okay, the Ross, <laughs> the Ross and Rachel of racing. And I know what I'm going to say. Your two favourite people. Okay? Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Frodon and the amazing, beautiful <laughs> Briny Frost, which you obviously have a love-hate relationship with, which if anybody watches this, Watches the finish line, knows uh, you can't get enough of her. You're mad for her. And uh, if that were her. true, if that were I true, can... there'd be pigs flying outside, would <laughs> you? I can expect a friend request, a friend request coming our way anytime soon. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> you guys covered it quite a lot, basically yesterday when I obviously watched watched you guys. I watched you guys every week. Uh, he won impressively. You can't knock how Frodon won. Uh, I have to say, I didn't think he would just because of the weight. I thought, I think a race, obviously going back, going by his previous race in the uh, Ryanair and just the how he performed, I thought him being top weight, he, he might not be able to, to carry it. There might be other ones better than him in the race. But let's be fair, Bryony done what she done best, led from the front. Just said, go and yeah. jump. And he jumped and kicked on. And I think uh, old Paul Nichols and Harry Durham, I think they cracked open the uh, Ace of Spades and the Don Perry on and had a party that night, I think. I think they were well happy with the way he performed. Look, I, I don't mind throwing on as a horse. I backed him the year he won the Ryan Air. I don't yeah, like Brian Air. Brian is, is not a good, she's not a good jockey. Like, and <laughs> She's a point and shoot version. Let's be honest about it. Look, I'm you can, you can, anybody can slate me. I don't mind. I'm not a jockey, but it's my opinion, and I'm strong in my opinion. She's good on a front runner, and the horse just shoots her down to the ground. The horse shoots her down to the ground. All he wants to do is please the person that's on him, jump, gallop, and try and win. Any anybody who's going to do well on that horse, uh, like. Whatever jockey is on is on it, but obviously she's she's um, got a rapport with the horse, and that's good for her. It's good for her career. He hasn't a hope in the Gold Cup, but I, I do think it. I I do I think that it, um, no no chance. I do I think that he, post, he back spread Brian no. big love heart. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> if Florian if Florian wins a Gold Cup. With, with the horses that he's going to have to go against, my hair will start growing again. That's how positive <laughs> I am that he's not going to win a gold cup. All right, but he has he has performed well, and that was a great way carrying performance. So I do agree that that is the a horse that should be in your five for the last three weeks. A hundred percent, hundred percent. I could not put him in, and obviously I thought I'd wind you up and uh, talk about Briny Frost. And obviously, when it comes down to who do you think would win in a, in a race between Frodon, Briny Frost, and Manella Indo or Rachel Blackmore, then? Manella Indo. And I don't really like Manella Indo, but yeah, <laughs> Manella Indo. Is that because Rachel's on it? Yeah, yeah to be honest. Yeah, she's the better jockey, so yeah. 
<laughs> no, Brian yeah. would Brian would uh, beat Rachel any day. Heads up. No, what's he? <laughs> I can I can feel your pain coming. I can feel it. No, I'm only one you are. Well, uh, I'll swiftly move on to my number five. Swiftly move let's, on. Yeah, let's <laughs> leave Sean out over here. Uh, I'm, I'm drawing you my over there. My number five, and the one I left to last because it's, I think it was the most uh, impressive performance of the horses that I picked was in that chase with uh, Captain Guinness, and it's unexpected. Yes. Uh, okay. He was, yes, yeah. Well, I backed him, so I was happy enough with that. Um, <laughs> he was well, well scouted. I did. I, I, I had a, I had a little bet on him. Yeah, he was well scouted last year. Um, over hurdles, he went off a short price favourite over um in the Leperstown meeting, the Dublin Racing Festival meeting before the the Cheltenham meeting. And he was pulled up um, at Christmas before that. He was beaten by uh, Easy Work. But he went off uh, odds on favour, I think, that day down at Limerick. And I wouldn't say that the course and the ground um, suited him. He clearly is better as a chaser. Uh, he's built like a chaser. And his brother, Great Fields, was just... Uh, I don't know if we, he's up. He was up at Willie Mullins. I don't know if he's still there. Um, a year I was up, actually up at... Say that again. Is it rings a bell that name, Great Fools? Yeah, rings a bell. Um, one of the years I was up at Cheltenham, uh, up at Punchestown with Andrew. He was in one of the two mile novice chase, and he won the. It was a Grade One. He won it, and literally all he does is just go head bonkers mad from the front for two <laughs> miles as fast as he can. Um, he kind of lost the plot, got injured, fell a couple of times. But this fella is his brother and looks to be the kind of same type of horse. Um, he wants to go fast. He wants to jump the fences at speed. And it's kind of catch me if you can. I think it was a really impressive performance. People yes. might crab it because Captain Guinness didn't show his form. But look, Captain Guinness couldn't lie up with the pace on that particular day. And all Unexpected could do was win the way he did. Headed yeah. chest over the line. He is down. I think it's a super impressive performance. And... Uh, he looks like a real proper two mile chaser, so I think he's an exciting horse going forward. JP, I have to say, JP has a quite a strong hand this year. Uh, a with, very, very uh, strong hand with chasers and, and yeah, yeah. some of the hurdlers from last year that might not have reached their potential, like um, Chantry House, Elixir Dane, this chap, some others. There's Andy Dufresne, there's loads of them going chasing, so he's, uh, he's lots to look forward to. Yes, to be honest, he wouldn't know where to put them. That'd be yeah, you'll have to split them <laughs> up. Oh, at that touch and touch, that, uh, we still don't have uh, a number one rider in, in, in Britain yet. I we think, still have, still I think uh, Mark Walsh should ride the Irish horses, and yes. John Joe O'Neill, I'd say, young John Joe will eventually get the job, but up until. Exactly. With the job, I, I don't know who's going to get it. I, I thought it was going to be Aiden Coleman, but he seems yeah, to be right for um, for Ollie Murphy now, so it's hard to know. But John Joe, John Joe's a good jockey. So going going back to the jockeys, I feel like I don't know about you, but I feel like every year Cheltenham's getting a little bit sucked out by all these jockeys that we've been following for years that keep retiring. Like, uh, yeah, but look. Woodsy, that happens in every sport, and, and and things move on, and time moves on. You get new trainers, you get new jockeys, and and you like you. We, we're thinking about the loss of Barry Garrity and Ruby Walsh, but like someone in their early twenties or, or their late teens getting into racing, now is watching John Joe, and they'll be watching him for the foreseeable future. It happens every sport. I, I don't think it's something to be to be sad about. Really, it's just that that's what happens. You move on with the times. I, but I think when it comes to betting, I think it makes you think twice before you know if Ruby Walsh was on a Willie Mullins, you know you could trust Ruby on the horse. Apart from the, probably yeah. the last hurdle, then you'd be yeah, right. having every, every part of your body crossed. But you could trust him. You knew that he'd do the job. Barry Garrity, 
you knew if he was on board, he could do the job and he could be a difference. Tony McCourt, you knew when he was on board, he could do the job and he could be the difference. But if you're throwing people like yeah. Hayden Coleman, throwing people like John Joe, uh, John uh, O'Neill Jr., there's a doubt in your mind that you think that they're going to do the, the job, I feel. I think it takes a bit, a little bit out of it. Yeah. When you go to that, like, can now obviously Barry Garrity. I've watched Barry Garrity drive. I don't know how, like, for someone, he doesn't really do, when he, when he's on the uh, in the rain, he doesn't really do much, but he seems, mm. he seems to get a hell of a lot out of horses. And I think obviously him retiring, I think Champ must have given him the uh, scary life this year. And I think he's uh, decided to uh, <laughs> to call it quits. I just think, yeah, I think you, you, you're putting a bit of doubt. I think it puts a bit of doubt on your mind now to back the horse with that person. And obviously, Mark Walsh, there used to be a lot of doubt in my mind back in Mark Walsh because I didn't really know him very well when I was, yeah. I was always second. Uh, obviously, he's come out and proved himself at Cheltenham last year when he uh, won the Ballymore, I believe. The Ballymore last year won it. Won that. Yes, he won. He won the Valley Warren City Island. Yeah, City Island. Yeah. Uh, so he's come out and, but before, before that, with Mark Walsh on a, on a, on a. Like I remember Mark Walsh. I think he went on a, one of the horses the previous year, in the uh, might be the mares, the mares hurdle, and completely did like nothing with the horse you thought was going to win. And I'm, ever since then, I was like, oh, it's Mark Walsh. Like, I'm not too sure about him. Obviously, because I don't hear him very know. much about him from England. He's a, he's a good jockey. He's a good jockey, but I understand yourselves over in England and that wouldn't know much about him, but he is a good jockey. Yeah, and now he's first Now he's first string with uh, JP. He's kind of gained that respect. And if I believe if a jockey can do it at Cheltenham, on a consistent basis, like John Joe can go out and win another race at Cheltenham, if Aiden can go out and win another race at Cheltenham. But you've got to believe Aiden Coleman only ran, won a grade one last, was it last year or the year before? Yep. Uh, and you're now putting someone like that, who's only won like a few grade ones on, say, Champ, who everyone's got hopes for on a Gold Cup. It kind of makes you think like, oh, maybe I should go for Nico. Because at least you know what you're getting from Nico, that would be the right thing. That's how I see it a little bit. But I've got fingers crossed that these new ones that can come forward. And maybe Sam might be able to regain a bit of a bit of form and get himself a few winners again. Because he was he was banging form at one point and then he just all went downhill for him, unfortunately. But uh, moving he was, on. He was. Yeah, he was. Right, yeah. Who's, the, who's your number five? Number five. Uh Right, it is. It, he is. He was the second favourite of the marsh last year. Okay, he unfortunately fell. I think it was sixth out last year. Uh, he holds the same colours as Saint Calvados and Simply the Bets. He went on to win the Browns advisory. Uh, he he ran last week. He didn't win. Uh, I think he came across a horse which I think had a bit less weight, but was a bit more fitter. And had a claimer on the back, which had obviously carry less weight as well. It was itchy feet. Yeah, I itchy like itchy feet. feet. I think he's a good horse. And I think, I think here, here and now, I think I know where he's going. He, like I say, he was in the marsh last year, so obviously he's not a novice anymore. And I personally think now they took him handicapping. I think the route they're going down is the Browns. I think they're going down the Browns with him again, uh, like they did with Simply the Best last year. Yeah. Uh, obviously, that's a handicap race as well. Won it last year, Simply the Best, looking to get their colours back in there again. Obviously, his last race was a handicap. Uh, I can't see him being competitive in the Ryanair. I can't see it. I can hear Simply the Bets is better than him, I think. Uh, and will win or will have more chance of winning the Ryanair than he will. So I think that they'll be taking him down the Browns this year. And I think, uh, I don't think there's any betting up for the Browns this year. I don't think, but I think if you're, if it does come up, it'll be, it'll be a good one definitely to watch for that because 
I yeah, it's a good see, horse. I can't see him going down, down, down in the route. I feel like the, the colours will want their to go back to a race they know they know, they know quite well. So that's, yeah. that's my last one. That's my last one. It's itch, itchy feet. Which, uh, that's a good one. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We were saying we're going to have a few um, anti post directions as well. Oh, yes. Uh, so we're going, we going? We're going Gold Cup, Ryanair, and Arkham. Gold Cup, Ryanair, Arkham for this show. But like I say, on the other shows, we will mention other races. And then when we get closer to Cheltenham, the handicaps will start coming out when we realise what horses are going to which to which one. So we're going with a couple of uh, good races from Cheltenham now. We kind of know where a few horses might go. Uh, so we'll save the Gold Cup till last. We'll start off with the, the Arkle. Right. Well, I'm, I'm going I will. I already said I have Captain Guinness backed, but um, my main selection for the Arkle is Darver Star. Um, yes. Again, I'm uh, I'm going with the the Irish, the Irish horses here. Um, ran very well in the Champion Hurdle. Ran very well in the Irish Champion Hurdle. He came out and looked good over fences. Uh, his first day, I think, it was at Punchestown, um, and I just think he ha he has a great show. Um, I don't think there's much point in putting him out to two mile four. He's not going to be good enough to beat Envoy Allen if he goes to the marsh. So stick with no. two miles, give it a go. Um, he has the speed, and uh, I think he's a great bet for the Ark. So, do you am I right in saying you rarely, rarely see a horse go from the champion hurdle to the Ark? Does that happen very often? Uh, I don't know to be honest. I'd have to put that one up, yeah, because obviously. Came third, didn't he, last year in the uh, champion hurdle? Ran, I think the connections will be well happy with the way he ran. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely on my radar as well. Uh, with it, uh, I I didn't have him though. I had Silios Emery because he got supplemented. So I thought it was a horrible one, it was a horrible cha champion hurdle, and you didn't know what was going to yeah, happen. Well, it wasn't the best champion hurdle in the world, but sure, look, it is what it is. Hmm. Go on, who are you? Uh, who are you going against uh, me with? Right, as you as you might be aware, uh, it was hard for me to pick one because the, the obvious one that stands out is the black and yellow of Shiskin. Yeah, but he hasn't jumped a fence yet, so I'm not gonna, I'm not going to sit here and back a seven to two anti post when he hasn't even jumped a fence. That's ridiculous. So I can't do that. I'm gonna back a horse. The price is a bit more, a bit more out there. Even though he hasn't jumped a fence either yet, and he's part of JP's gang. He's part of the raid that he's got on the Arkle this year, which will be the third in the Supreme last year, which is Plantry House. Yeah, very good. Uh, Nicky Henderson's again. Obviously, Nick Henson has the favourite, and he'll be putting Nico on Shishkin, no doubt, unless Shishkin comes out and absolutely probably does a goshing on the flat. Uh, and then he might turn his attention to Charger House up that might come out and uh, take to offence. But at the moment, I think you can get about 20 to 1, I think, for Charger House. So he ran, he, he ran okay. In the in the supreme, like I say, the first two just in the in the last few furlongs took it by storm. So it's hard to get away from them too. But obviously, one of them's got staying hurdling. The other one's looks like it's going for the arc as well. So I have to look at something else. And I think that was a very very solid race that was last year. I think a lot of things will come good from that race. You've got Alexia Dana as well. Obviously, being Irish, can't pick him. So I've gone down uh, Chantry House, I reckon, for the moment to definitely keep an eye on. Maybe be a great each ratio, shout. Uh, 20 or 20 to 1, I think, to be honest. It's a good show. Good show. Uh, move on. Now, this is this selection is one I have a lot of faith in, and I think it'd be good. So I want to hear yours first for the Ryanair. The Ryanair, I have Fakir Dudery, uh, Joseph O'Brien's... Um, Joseph O'Brien's horse, JV McManus' horse. Uh, he jumps lovely. 
I think he went, he went to the Arca last year and I think two mile four is more his trip. Um, I love the horse. Back to lots of time. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's an amazing <laughs> jumper of a fence. And he just yes. doesn't seem to he to, he doesn't seem to win enough races, but I still think they're kind of unsure what trip suits him best. I think he needs yeah. that intermediate trip at two mile four, two mile five. Um, I think he's a good shout in the right air. I think uh, as ever, Joseph would have him trained to the minute for the day, so he's my right air uh, selection. I like it. I do like it. Obviously, he came second uh, in the Arkle last year to put the kettle on. Uh, I backed I backed him in the Supreme when he ran. Uh, obviously, he, he was he had an advantage with the uh, how old he was and he had the weight yeah. off. And then I backed him again at Aintree, which he had lost by a nostril to Pentland Hills. Yeah. And then I backed, I backed him when he well I can say he beat Sam Crow. Sam Crow fell at the the, the second last, didn't he? He uh, did. That race, that was, I think that was going to be a great finish. That race. Yeah, I don't know. I think maybe Sam Crow would have beaten that day. To be honest, he did look like he was coming. Yeah, Sam Crow did a Sam Crow, but Sam Crow also did a Sam Crow in Cheltenham. I remember, yep. I remember David O'Leary basically saying, "Look, I think we're done, mate, with Sam Crow. I think, I think he's done. <laughs> don't want nothing to do with him anymore." You know, that's how he speaks it's on ITV like that. And he, can't, he gave like, up too. He gave up too soon. He did, and obviously, I would say come back to bite him in the ass. He didn't because he took all the plaudits and managed to do it. Mine is, I think he's about twenty or to one or thirty to one. There's one of them ones out there, uh, and he was the winner of the Northern Trust last year, which also was won by Apu Tom, as you might know, Apu Tart. <laughs> Which what went on. Tom's <laughs> even getting a mention. Yes. Oh, to be honest, all three of you got to get a mention because you you got yeah, true. Uh, And obviously, he went favourite. He was favourite for uh, the race uh, last year, and obviously, he didn't make it. But this year, I personally think it's going to be between the two horses that battled it out against each other last year in uh, one of the main races, which will be simply the bets. But my pick is the Imperial Aura. Yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I, wouldn't, um, I wouldn't turn anybody off that. I think he's a good horse. Now. I do think simply the bets is a good horse. I think they're two good horses from uh, yeah. that handicap race at Cheltenham. So, yeah, I'd be a fan of that now. I think those two are going to be great horses. Obviously, I remember watching Tom... Uh, tips up simply the bets, but I just think this year that maybe Imperial Aura might just improve more and progress more to take that gap away last year and produce it for this year. Obviously, they're both Cheltenham winners, so they both gain a hell of a lot of respect. Uh, and I think the Ryan is going to be very strong this year. and he also going from there, moving on from there. I think he's. I think he'll win the Paddy Barra Gold Cup uh, in a couple of weeks. I think he's at ten to one yeah. at the moment. I think he. I think he get get on him. If, get on him now because if he turns up, I think. I think he wins that. I don't think anything else really out there will will match it if he carries on with the form he did last year. I think Kim Bailey can get him. Get him in form. I think David Bass is a great jockey, and. I think he has a great chance in the Ryanair, and I honestly think he'll win the Paddy Bear Gold Cup. So ten to one, even each way, I think it'd be great. So that's one of my bets for the upcoming week and for the Ryanair. Uh, and we're going to move on now to the Gold Cup, which I think I know what your uh, your selection is going to be, and it's going to be Delta Work, no doubt. So please tell me more about Delta Work. Look, this is obvious. <laughs> but look. Right right now, there's a few horses I like, but they all have to go a good bit to beat Album Photo. He'll follow the same path. Um, we had Patrick on the finishing line. He'll follow the same path. He'll go to Tremor, go to, go to Cheltenham. Then, if it's not broke, don't fix it. He's still a good price. I think you're always going to get a good price on him. People crab his form, and it's because you might not see him that often through the years. He doesn't win 
like the Lexus or the, that thing. But his Gold Cup form is there. He's won it two years in a row. Um, at this stage, there's no reason for me to be going back and forth about what he, how good he is because he's shown it twice. I think he's yeah. still a great bet. So he's my Gold Cup bet album photo. For obviously, for the Irish selection, obviously people that know you yeah. obviously know the love you have toward the top of the game. So you can't get away from the fact how much love you have for the top of the game. But I suppose for you on a safe bet, knowing that top of the game has a chance of maybe not even getting there, I think uh, album photo for you would probably be the safer bet, wouldn't it, now for now? Yeah. Especially yeah. for the selections. Because I think top of the game is a great horse and I hope he gets there because I, th I think the Gold Cup will be great this year if, if everyone gets there in one piece. Who are you? Goes, who are you taking me? On, who are you taking me on with? Well, there's only one. There's only one to take on, really, isn't it? And that's Santini. Only joking, mate. <laughs> only joking. Uh, gonna say, uh... <laughs> only joking. No, not that uh, three mile drop job. No. Uh, I'm saying that though. One lost by nostril last year, so you never know. Next year could be yeah. a year, could be a year. But I just think, I think it's just it's just got champ written all over it. I'm sorry for that. I no, very good, yeah. Champ's a champ's a bit of an enigma, but I do like champ. No, I mean, I nearly took Barry Garrett off the wrong course a few races ago, and Barry Gary had yeah. to do like rally driving on him to get him back to uh, the right course. Obviously, the horse. About doesn't jumps, but he's not the greatest jumper in the world. He loses lengths when he jumps. But that how he caught up with Alejo and Millerendo and won that race. It just it just shows that the Gold Cup that I still think he's got such an engine and those extra two furlongs that only gonna be better for him because what he loses out on jumping he'll make up with the engine and that turn of 30 that seems to have. Like, those two took it on with each other and obviously puffed each other out and people argue that Manila Endo, when Champ went past him, took, went, oh, crap, someone's come past me. That's the best, it's best start racing again. But I think Manila Endo would leave that too late again for the Gold Cup. And I just think if Champ can improve his jumping and the way he did that turn of foot right at the end, I think he's got a great chance at the goal game. And I think, uh, I think at twelves and tens at the moment, I'll be all over that, all over that, all over. It's a good show. If I I wouldn't disagree. He needs to, he needs to get his there. jumping in order. But I wouldn't disagree with that. If you could get a bet, champ to, to fall at any time, money back. No, that's the bet you want. <laughs> but no book in the world without stupid to even do that bet. Yeah. So uh yeah, that's that's my gold cup. So I'll definitely be all over Champ. Uh, I'd, obviously I hope to see how he how he is. I'm not sure. Do you reckon they'll take him to the King George? Uh I to be honest, I don't know what they'll do with Champ. I, I'm just eager. I'm eager to see him out, but I don't know what they're gonna do with him. Yeah, I'm so, not too sure either, to be honest. It's good to see. I know he's in, he's in the betting for a few big races coming up. Uh, he's betting for the, uh, is it the Labrooks? The one that top of the game is in. He's in the betting for that as well. Yeah. Uh, but we'll discuss that and then on the other show. So, moving forward, obviously, coming to the end, obviously, we've been talking about five selections, five from Ireland, Fry from Britain that have stood out in the past few weeks. Uh, obviously, we've got to look forward as well. So we've got to look at the races that are coming up and try and give people that are listening a, a good tip for the races coming up and give them a bit more information about anything. So we'll keep it short and sweet. Uh, is there any races at Ireland over this weekend or over the next few weeks that takes your eye that any horses you can see have a great chance? Yeah. I picked out one Woodsy um, in the Morgiana hurdle. Um, I yes. think it's on Sunday, Sunday week. Um, I think it'll be a good race. Some of the champion hurdle contenders are in it. But one that's a bit of an outsider, so an each way bet, is Beacon Edge. Do you know what? I've, that's not me, isn't it? Beacon Edge? 
Yeah, and no one meets horses. And no one meets horses are flying um, since the since the jump racing came back. But he just looks like he's put it all together this season. He he won a race during the week and uh, head and chest on the bridle just looked great. Um, he was there thereabouts in harder races last year, but probably a little bit immature. Being thrown into a Grade One company, but I actually do think he'll uh, he'll hold his own in Grade One company, and it wouldn't surprise me if he wins. He's fourteen to one, so he's an each way bet, and I thought that was the best um, one for the upcoming races over the next few weeks for the the people listening. Yes, I, uh, yeah. I did see when the was happening. No doubt. In the next episode, we'll be able to speak of what happens for the Morgana and pick yeah. out the horses that actually did shine for that. Uh, Obviously, we got in England. We have got a couple of good races this weekend. Uh, we got the return of the highest-rated horse in Britain, which is surname uh, in the Charlie, Charlie Hall Chase, uh, which is left-handed, I believe. So, it's, obviously, it's when it comes to left-handed, you don't normally put surname in the same category. Uh, I'm quite optimistic the fact they're going left-handed because that could mean that we might see him at Cheltenham this year. Which is the strangest thing ever when you get when the highest rated horse in Britain avoids Cheltenham every year, you kind of think to yourself, what? Is, it, is, it, is, he your, is he your selection? He has to be, to be honest. He has to be. I have to, okay. go, I have to go with the uh, with, with the best rated horse, you know what I mean? It's not a it's not going to be one that's going to win you a lot of money, but. I think, like anything, you have to hope the best win. If you want the best to do the best, and I'm hoping if he goes and wins, that we will see him at Cheltenham. I want to see him at Cheltenham. It's not, how can the best best rated horse avoid the best festival of the year? It's just well, uh, if he, if he does win left handed, I think you will see him at Cheltenham. So you might get your wish, but. You'll have to see Saturday and see what happens. Well, yeah, because he definitely disappointed the last time, right, didn't he? He was, he was, to be honest, he was lucky to survive that. Yeah. Nasty. Yeah. <laughs> I look forward him. to it now. I'm actually looking forward to seeing surname, and there's some good racing over the next few weekends. So when we get there to is. talk again in three weeks' time, it will, uh, it will be interesting. Yes. So next three weeks, obviously, Ireland being in lockdown. Uh, you got any, anything planned for the next three weeks? No. No, no, just ride out the storm and hopefully get back to work then a couple of weeks after that. So, yeah. other than that, it'll just be uh, watch the racing and, and tip along. So, yes, yes. Do. And, uh, send me over any tips like you did at the weekend, and hopefully, it's time I get on it. <laughs> I couldn't well, be on this one. You had some best facts in the race, so you, you know what I mean? But I won that one, so I won't mind yeah. a lot. For like seven lengths, I bet you was like. Yeah, yeah. but uh, Dave, it's been a pleasure. What's uh, It's been a pleasure, and uh, we get uh, we get the other finishing line finishing line lads on uh, on some uh, some of the shows as well, and uh, we'll have a little bit of banter back and forth. It'd be a pleasure. Like I say, I'm 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 very grateful that uh, when I reached out to you, you approved this, and uh, obviously, people out there, I hope you take it for what it is. Two people that just enjoy racing and just want to have a laugh and talk about saying they enjoy. And I look forward to the next few weeks and yeah, fingers crossed, bring on the guys in the finish line. I'd love to speak to them, get their input. And uh, I believe, uh, is, is Tom English, is he? Is, is he or the Irish? Yeah, yeah, he's somewhere like New England. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he sounds English. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like he lives in Ireland, so maybe... Well, I mean, he can help me out with a few English selections and then Andrew can help you out with a few Irish selections. But like I say, next, uh, next three weeks, keep in touch and uh, we'll crack on with the rest of our selections. Well, now, Woodsy, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. All right. Take care, Dave. All the best. And everyone, I uh, hope to see you in the next three weeks. Enjoy your racing and remember, gamble responsibly. Always gamble responsibly. Absolutely. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye.